Good morning, family. Today is October 22nd, 2017. We are going to talk about compassion, endurance, not for ourselves, but for others. So in 1 Corinthians, it talks about, actually 2 Corinthians, excuse me. We're going to read from verses 1 to 10. I'm going to do my best to break this down because we're going to jump around. I want you to see that you're struggling and what you're enduring is actually helping other people. As we get persecuted, as we get talked about, as we go through our trials, our tribulations, and our sufferings, we're supposed to lean on Christ and not lean on our own understanding. Some of you are carrying heavy burdens. People don't understand um, in the book of Genesis when Joseph carried his burdens, his actually when I think it's in chapter 50, he says that um, don't be, he was telling his brothers, don't be hard on themselves for what you meant for evil, God meant for good that I may, that he may bring prosperity and life to you and your offspring it had nothing to do with joseph joseph endured that and all that he went through for those 13 years for the benefit of somebody else and he encouraged them and so you might be going through a lot of stuff right now but remember someone is being encouraged because somebody is watching you someone's watching me someone's listening to you they're seeing does that god that you really believe in that jesus christ do you really believe in him? Are you really enduring because of him? Is he really the strength that you're leaning on? Well, we're going to find out this in Corinthians, okay? So, Lord, as I do my best to present myself wholeheartedly and completely to you, leaning not to my own understanding, but acknowledging you early this Sunday morning, to present a word of encouragement, a word of hope to your children, my brothers and sisters, that we are laboring in this mission to bring souls to heaven together, Lord. May I also be a good witness of encouragement and edification, Father God, to help my brothers and sisters to endure and persevere through their own trials and tribulations, giving all glory, all praise, and all honor to you, for it is not I who is speaking, but it is you speaking through me. In Jesus' name, amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in all Achaia. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. His mercy is new every morning. His comfort is through the Holy Spirit that resides in us. Verse 4. With who comforteth us in all our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. So as we're going through what we're going through, we're being comforted, we're being strengthened, we're being led by the Holy Spirit through Christ, right? As we're doing that, it's a handoff to someone else to, to comfort them, to encourage them, to uplift them, not to tear them down. The Bible says we are to build up and to edify each other. If someone is going through a heavy burden, you don't need to throw scripture at them. You need to give them scripture of encouragement. That's what Paul was saying to the Corinthians. See, the Corinthian church had all the gifts they had they was blessed beyond measure but they were still carnal and paul was trying to get them to understand that god had blessed them and they needed to be a church that was an actual church of jesus christ 
And that's what we have to do nowadays. The churches are hospitals. They're hospitals for the broken, for the needy, for the hungry, for the lost, right? And so we are the church. When you go to church, it's a bunch of churches coming into a building. But we are the church and we're to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And so as Jesus is teaching us to be comfort and teaching us how to endure and teaching us how to persevere, even in our brokenest moments, we raise our hand to Jesus and say, help me. I can't do this. Jesus said, call upon me in, my, in your time of need and I will be an ever-present help. We're going to talk into how Jesus himself gave us an example how to endure and persevere even as he was broken. Verse 5, for as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the, of the same sufferings which we also suffer, or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. So what he's saying is that even though we're going through all this, we're going through all this for you. We're, we're being used by God right now to endure these persecutions, these sufferings, and all these things we're going through because it's building us up. And then when, in return, we're going to build up the next person. When, when someone is going through a broken marriage, a broken relationship, children out there in the world, health issues, financial issues, all these things... God has allowed some of us to go through this ahead of time so that we could turn back and encourage the next person how to endure, how to persevere, how to find the blessing in the trial. Because there is a blessing in the trial. Remember in Isaiah, I think it is, it says treasures out of darkness. When we get broken, when we get persecuted, when we go through all this, the Bible says if, if, it, if it be the will of God, that you should suffer for doing good instead of suffering for doing evil is the will of God. So you have to remember that Christ himself suffered who knew no sin and became sin for us. Verse 7, And our hope of you is steadfast knowing that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so shall you be also the, consol the consolation. There's a gift, there's a prize in this. The consolation is what you're going to get at the end. And that's salvation. That's the eternal life with Jesus Christ. That's the breakthrough in your ministry. That's the breakthrough in your family. That's the breakthrough in helping someone get to the kingdom of God. These are the things that we're learning to do as we persevere because we're showing someone else how to do it. Remember, this is all about us comforting the next person through their situation because we was once there. Verse 8. For we would not, brethren and sisters, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength, insomuch that we despaired even life. Sometimes it is so heavy and powerful and strenuous that you just cannot deal with it and you're like god you know what you could just take me right now i don't need to go through this no more i've had enough take me home that's what they're saying there's they've been there they've been so broken so hurt so discouraged so down and out and so despaired and they're pressing on for the glory of god but in their mind they're like we have to do this because we're picking up where christ left off but it's heavy on us. It's 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 really strenuous. And I was gonna save the scripture, but let me go here really quick. This is our Lord and Savior Jesus. This is Matthew chapter twenty six. We're gonna start at verse thirty six. Then came Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and said unto his disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter the two sons of Zebedee, Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. What he was telling them is, This is how broken I am. This is how 
heavy my burden is that I'm carrying right now. This is how heavy my child is that you can't even understand it. But sit here and watch with me. Learn to do what I did. I called upon my father. I called upon him in my time of need because he was the only one that was able to help me. Um, verse uh, 40, uh, Matthew 26, verse 40. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and said unto them, What could you not watch with me one hour? Sometimes we get so weak and so tired that we can't pray. We can't seek the Lord. And what Jesus is saying, you need to really pay attention to what I'm going through because you're going to be there. And that's what happened in Corinthians. Um, but in verse 42, he went away again the second time and praying, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. See, he was saying, I don't want to do this. If there's another way to do this, can we do it? But if not, your will be done, not mine. That's what these Corinthians was trying to get across to them is that we're enduring all this, but there's a consolation to this. And we're going to teach you how to endure, how to persevere while you're going through your trial so you can help the next man. Because that's what Jesus was. Remember, Jesus was our example on how to be the living episode for him to walk in through by and forth. Not just us, but for other folks. Uh, verse 9, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God which raised the dead focus on this scripture verse 9 but we had the sentence of death in ourselves but we should not trust in ourselves but in God who raised the dead proverbs 3 5 and 6 trust not in the in your lean not trust in the lord with all your heart lean not to your understanding but acknowledge the lord in all things and he'll direct your path he will give you the strength verse 10 who delivered us from so great a death and doeth deliver in whom we trust and he will yet deliver us he came, he brought us salvation. We gave our lives to the Lord. We keep going and even when we fall, he's still there because he's faithful and just to never leave us nor forsaken us. So as we're walking and growing and falling and getting weak and getting back up, Jesus is there. He is walking with us, in us, through us, by us and for us. And he's teaching us how to be this good example to helping those who are falling short. Uh, I want to read right here. Colossians chapter 1, verse 3. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints, for the hope which I laid up for you in heaven, wherefore you heard before in the word of truth and of the gospel. As he's telling them, his, their faith, their love, their perseverance is what they kept praying for. And Paul, when he would hear about these things, it would encourage him to keep going. It would encourage him to keep pressing on for the high call. He said, Forgetting those things behind me, I press forward for the high calling in Christ Jesus. For it is no longer I who live, but Christ Jesus lives through me. And what he was saying is that these things that happened in the past, they're, they're gone. There's no reason of me focusing on them or who I used to be. But I'm going to press forward toward the high call of Christ Jesus. Because it's not me that's living anymore. It's Christ living his life through me. And when we that allow Christ to live through us, we learn how to walk like him. That's what we're, what that basically means is 
I'm learning to walk and talk and act and think and speak like Jesus Christ did. And the way I'm learning that is by being in this Bible, focusing on the Holy Spirit and letting him lead and direct me. The Bible says that without Christ, we could do nothing. You on this page, keep me praying for you. Prayer is still on the mirror. Prayer is still being added to the mirror. And sometimes I want to take them down, but I can't. I don't even, I know some of you are telling me when they get answered and I mark them off. And sometimes I go through some heavy stuff and I'm like, Lord, I don't even want to do this no more. But you encourage me because I think of you and everybody else, the gels, the youth, the ministries that God got me involved with, that encourages me. And I get risen up in my spirit because of the Holy Spirit in me. And I press on. Be a light. Be an encouragement. Don't weigh yourself down. Even Jesus Christ was so sorrowful all the way into death. But he had to find strength through the Holy Spirit. You are being a light. You are being an encouragement. And you are being strength to somebody. You may not see it. You may not ever hear about it. But someone is watching you. Some ones are watching you. Someone's going to need you. It may be me, but understand something. These brothers went through all this to be an encouragement to someone else as you're being an encouragement to someone else. And so I go through these scriptures and these chapters now breaking them down for you so people can get a better understanding. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. But this was about being being comforted as you are comforting others and heavenly father today as we come before you presenting ourselves before you as a living sacrifice lord may you live your life through us lord god giving us eyes to see ears to hear and a heart to receive what thus says the lord father god we cannot do this without you we know we need you through jesus christ and the holy spirit we surrender our life to your will father god not all will be done, but yours be done. And Lord, because we know you are not a man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you should repent, we know that if we have presented ourselves to you, you will build us up on our most holiest faith. For you said, he who has begun a good work in you will continue it until the day of your return. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. Happy Sunday.